Well, hello again, and welcome to another one of our wonderful midweek moments from St. John's. This week, I get to introduce to you uh, some very good friends of St. John's. A few years ago, Brixen and Annie Sam approached us as a congregation and asked if they could partner with us, and we welcomed them into our life together. And so today, I get to introduce to you Reverend Brixen and Annie Sam, who are leaders of a congregation that meet here with us in our facilities. Brixen and Annie, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It would be our pleasure today to introduce you more fully to the people of St. John. So would you please tell us a little bit about your wonderful story of your family and your nation of origin? Thank you, Reverend Faust, and thank you, St. John's family, for having us here. Uh, we are originally from Sierra Leone, West Africa, our home country, but um, 11 years ago, my whole family immigrated to the United States of America. It's almost exactly 11 years ago. In two days, it will be exactly 11 years in the United States when my whole family, my wife and three kids, by God's divine providence, immigrated to the United States of America. Um, we are a family of five. We have uh, our eldest daughter, Annette. We have Briggs and Sam Jr. And we have Ian Benjamin Sam. We are all here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Thank you, Brixen. Um, and I know, Annie, that once this pandemic ends, we're all going to have a hallelujah service, aren't we? We're all going to just be so happy again, yes. aren't we? <laughs> yeah. um, and so I would like for you to please tell the folks a little bit about your congregation and um, about the work that you do and the work that some of your congregational members do as well. Um, I just want to say thank you again for welcoming us to this honorable church, the St. John's Baptist. As members of Together in Christ International Ministries, we are mostly Sierra Leoneans, Liberians, Tanzanians, and Congolese. We have some of them that worship with us. And most of us are CNAs and nurses. And some of them are working in hotels, some of them are working in um, um, McDonald's, you know. But we just thank God that we are able to bring us together and worship in our own culture. And the St. John Baptist was able to open their sanctuary for us as we are able to gather each and every member and worship every Sunday. And we believe that after this pandemic, we're going to meet again to celebrate <laughs> and to rejoice. You know, most times we miss that hugging out there. Uh -huh. And I was saying, I said, oh, this pandemic, you know, this virus is making us not to have that friendly hugging again. And we even have that problem because we told our members that when we'll be worshiping this time, until everything is settled, we're not going to be doing the hugging again until we meet. <laughs> Most of them are not happy with it, but we thank God that we are able to overcome it. And none of our members are victims of this virus, and we just praise God for that. That's very good. It is. We're all thankful for that. Uh, Brixen, I know that you were very involved with Baptist World Alliance, and I also know that your family had a tremendous challenge, kind of a tragedy um, with your daughter Annette and all of the health problems there. Would you tell that story of how, even in the midst of that health crisis, Baptist World Alliance and the relationships you had there sort of became manifestations of the hands of God in your lives? Yes, uh, the Baptist World Alliance is a very wonderful family. It's a very unique family that um, I thank God that I became part of that family and I'm still part of that family. I was the president and director of youth for Africa and the vice president for the Baptist World Alliance Youth Department and also served in various committees. 
And uh, I traveled extensively during uh, that position. I've been to several countries in Europe, in, in South America, in Asia, and mostly almost every major uh, country in Africa. In 2007, my eldest daughter, Annette Sam, was diagnosed with a congenital heart disease that needed a surgery overseas, that was out of Sierra Leone. And unfortunately, in Sierra Leone, <laughs> we only had one cardiologist, and what he does was only to diagnose, you know, and uh, if you are diagnosed with a heart problem in Sierra Leone of that nature, it's like a death sentence, you know, because one, the resources were not available, and it could not be done, not only in Sierra Leone, even in West Africa, or anywhere in Africa, that surgery could not be done. So I thank God for the Baptist World Alliance family and other international friends. So I reached out to my Baptist World Alliance family and friends and told them about the situation that my daughter has been diagnosed with a congenital heart disease that needed surgery overseas. And fortunately, my friends from Norway you know, were the first to respond saying, wherever that surgery is going to be done, will take care of the travel expenses. You know, and uh, another Baptist World Alliance friend from Austria, who was the administrative secretary for the All Africa Baptist Fellowship, uh, which headquarters was in, in Ghana, um, forwarded the medical report to her dad, who is an Austrian and had connections in Europe, and contacted the German Heart Foundation for Children. Mm. And uh, they looked at it and they said, yes, they are going to raise the funds. So within a period of six months, the funds were raised. My wife, Annie, and Annette flew to Munster, Germany, you know, where the surgery was done. The Munster Baptist Church and the Baptist folks in Germany and Europe and all over the world just gave their tremendous support and gave our daughter a new life. We even also had friends here from the United States who had already come in contact with, who we are just a blessing, spiritually, morally, and financially. And today as I speak, Annette is in good health. When we came to the United States 11 years ago, we went to see a pediatrician, and he did her, her medical, and they said the surgery was perfectly done and no cause to complain. So, we want to thank God yes. for that uh, deliverance through the connection of the, with the Baptist World Islands and many, many other friends and families worldwide. And Annette still today has a wonderful smile. Yes. She has the smile of her parents and the oh. sweetness of her mother. Oh, yes, yes. And, and the, the heart of her parents as well. So she is a, a blessing to all of us. Yes. Annie, would you share a little bit about how that journey up to Europe then ended up bringing you to Charlotte? How did you get to Charlotte, North Carolina? Oh, we just want to thank God. First of all, I want to thank God for my daughter's life. And I want to thank all the ones that supported that journey to Germany. We had a good time there. I didn't even feel like I was not home because everything was settled. <laughs> I had people who were taking me to the hospital. And I had people who were taking me around. And I had a family we were living with. Me. She was like a mother. You know, she really treated me like a, uh, like a mother. And when we returned back, 2009, we played the DV, the diversity visa. And I, was, uh, I won it. So we were able to immigrate to the United States because of the Polaskis. They are friends of Brixen when he was coming for conferences. Mm -hmm. And when Brixen wrote them, my wife won this lottery. lottery and we need sponsors. They were just, I don't know how to term those people. They are just angels. They just responded immediately. Send, because they wanted to see if it was not anything 
fake or what. So they said, send everything, let's check, we'll sponsor the package. And after they checked, they found out that it was real. They sent a line to Brixton, we're going to sponsor the package. And we are here today, we want to be grateful to them. Because coming to America, they did everything. Tom and Liden Polaski and their mm -hmm. daughter, Kate, because she accepted for us to be with them. We want to thank God for their lives because they sponsored us until we get here. We lived with them for almost 10 months before we left them. Everything up to now, everything, they want to know what's going on with the kids. They are concerned about our living here, what is going on, and even the connection with uh, the St. John Baptist was leading. She was the one that talked to Reverend Fowles and we were able to come in and we had a good uh, rapport with Reverend Fowles. We were able to get the sanctuary. So I just want to thank God because 11 years ago, this family, the Polaskis, Tom and Liden, and Kate, I will never leave the daughter, <laughs> sponsored us to come to the United States of America. Five of us. My husband, Reverend Brixton Sam, myself, my son, Brixton Jr., Annette Sam, and Jan Benjamin Sam. Yes, yes, the, the Pulaski's have blessed a lot of us oh, by yes. welcoming oh, you, yes. their expression of hospitality. But hospitality has been part of your story. Yes. Um, even before Annette's illness was diagnosed, you all expressed hospitality to other people. Oh, yes. And then you have been the beneficiaries mm -hmm. of hospitality mm -hmm. as people have welcomed you mm -hmm. into their lives. Yes. Would you talk a little bit about the Christian kindness and the hospitality and how your lives are different today because of that? Yes, like you've heard our story, people have been helpful, hospitable to us. And we too, as a family and as a church, we've tried to do the same. Like in Africa, before we immigrated to the United States, we had two war orphans mm -hmm. that stayed with us. They were not our biological children, but um, they lost their parents during the war. And so we took them, a boy and a girl. We could not come with them to the United States because they were not our biological children. Mm -hmm. But even while they were back home in Sierra Leone and we were here, we took care of every aspect of their lives, make sure we took care of their housing and their living. And today, the two of them have graduated from university and they can now live on their own, a boy and a girl. So even while we are back home, we, 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 we are very hospitable. And, uh, and when we came back here in the United States, even with the little assistance we were having from friends and to settle down, we tried to be hospitable amongst our uh, other immigrants we met here. Mm -hmm. We opened our home to people who were needy. We reached out to the community, helping people, you know, settling down. And as a church, together in Christ International Ministries, even though we're a small church with little resources, but uh, that did not limit us not to be hospitable. We supported and uh, a, a, a school project in Liberia, you know, the Slack Commission. You know, every year we make sure we at least we send a little help, you know, to upkeep that school. And in Sierra Leone, during the Ebola crisis, we were able to raise funds and support. The, they had a mud slide in which the church uh, was pastoring. We had about 20 members who were victims. We raised offerings and supported uh, the victims and also other survivors of that. And most recently, even during this corona crisis, uh, when there was a lockdown in Sierra Leone, uh, yes, we had a lockdown here in the United States, but for some, there were ways we could navigate to, to, you know, to leave. But there, it was so worse that we came together as a congregation and tasked each member at least 30 bucks, you know, which could buy a bag of rice that will feed a family of five for a month, just $30, you know. And so we reached out to the congregation. We said, let's just do this one-time help, 
you know, and sustain people's lives. So we're able to send some support and bought rice and gave to each family that was able to sustain them throughout the period of the lockdown until it was over. So even within this community, we have reached out to people who have been hospitalized, to people who have been homeless, people who have been depressed, you know, share the love of God for them because that's what Jesus said, that when I was hungry, you gave me to eat. When I was homeless, you gave me shelter. When I was in prison, you visited me. So whatever you do to the least of these people, you've done to me. Think as a church and as a family, we've just been doing this. And you still do that. And we still inspire do that us with yes. your yes. sincerity yes. and yep. your hospitality. Uh, Together we are followers of Jesus. Yes. The one who shows us the way yes. of kindness and sensitivity and hospitality, sincerity. Um, we should remember that Jesus himself was a refugee, yes. an immigrant, so to speak. He had to flee for his life as an infant, his family. And then he himself was often treated as someone who was an outsider. And he is described as someone who often had nowhere to lay his head because yeah. he was misunderstood and oppressed and set aside and set apart. So you recognize within us the presence of Christ, but you do so because the presence of Christ recognizes us Amen. because Christ is in you as well. Yeah. So we're grateful for our partnership with you. We look forward to that partnership growing stronger Amen. during this time yes. and beyond this time. Amen. Amen. Thank you thank for you. this time together today. Thank you, Reverend Thank you, Reverend Thank you, St. John, for having us here. <laughs>